Hello everyone, uh, my name is Petr Šibík and welcome on today's presentation, Maximizing the Polar and REST API with React. Uh, today, I will give you a short background around what functionality is already available with Polarion and its new REST API and what are our plans for the future. Uh, after that, we will see a live demo from Martin, uh, who uh, created a nice, uh, nice example of using Polarion REST API with React and doing it all from a live report of a Polarion page. First, a little disclaimer, everything uh, future looking that you will see is our current plan. And, uh, uh, and as you know, the plans may change. So please always check the new and noteworthy blog post after each release to see uh, which new features really made it into a specific release. Let's start with what is already available. Uh, we've introduced Polarion REST API uh, in Polarion 22R2 with a focus mainly on the work items topic. We gave you an opportunity to query the work items, get details of them, get all the attributes such as fields and custom fields, change them. You can also perform workflow actions on work items and from the more advanced functionality around work items, we've added support for watches, hyperlinks. Uh, you can work with work item comments and attachments. You can also uh, get linked work items and work with them as well as link and unlink them. Uh, by the way, I, uh, I didn't mention it before. If you have any questions, please ask them in the chat and uh, we will answer them either during the presentation or in the Q&A after the presentation. Thank you. On top of the work items topic, we've also focused on uh, two big topics of Polarion. First one is live documents and second one is live reports or pages as you may know, as you know them. Uh, yes, it is being recorded. Uh, uh, for live documents, we've added the possibility to get the detail and uh, get information about uh, and get information about it, about outer custom fields and so on. You are able to update document fields and you are also able to perform workflow action on documents and also branch and reuse them. So far, it's not possible to work with the content of live doc, but more on that later. For live reports, it's the very same. You can get information about uh, the object. You can update the fields and you can work with page parameters. On top of that, uh, we've also worked on specific use cases uh, specific use cases uh, uh, that were that were uh, directly influenced by early feedback that we got from our customers and partners. Uh, so we've added the possibility to list projects and get their details. And also it is now possible uh, to uh, create a new user, configure it, uh, including setting a license for the user. So you can set, uh, you can set uh, the user's project roles and global roles, as well as uh, add them to user groups. So this is the scope of the REST API that is now available uh, already for Polarion 22R2. For the future releases, here you can see 2304 use cases. Uh, we've changed uh, the naming of our releases. Uh, the 2304 uh, was formerly known as Polarion 23R1. Now, 23 refers to the year and 04 refers to the month where we are targeting the release. So, for the next release that will come in April, uh, we are focusing on three big topics. First one is support for live documents. Uh, so far, you've been only able to get the, doc uh, get the object and work with its fields or run the work workflow transitions but you weren't able to manipulate the content. Now you will be able to get the full data as XML, as XML format, and you will be able to manipulate it and push the data back and therefore updating the documents. On top of that, uh, we will be introducing uh, something that we call document part, and it will be a more programmatical way how to manipulate the content of a, of a document. We will start uh, with a showcase of what this uh, capability will be able to do in the future. 
by allowing you to manipulate work items that are in the document, but in the future we plan to cover the whole document topic and uh, make a document part out of all of the elements. So free text, tables, images, diagrams, page, uh, page stops, and things like that. Uh, for pagination, this is one of the gaps uh, from the initial release. Uh, so far, you aren't able to get uh, big results with many objects uh, paginated. So you either can get them all at once or none at all. Now, we are introducing a general support for both the main collection endpoints, which are currently work items, users, and projects. In future, it will be it will be document parts, it will be plans, test runs, and so on and so on. And we also implemented pagination for sub resources. Those are things like comments, attachments, linked work items, and so on. The third, the third bit, big uh, t topic that we will be covering for the next release is enumerations. When we looked into this topic, we quickly figured out that it's more complex than we anticipated. And we've separated the functionality into two parts. First one is the user work with enumerations, such as getting uh, enumerations, title, color, icon, description, and so on. When you are working with uh, fields and custom fields and with the enumeration options. Second part is all around the administrative task. So for the first time, you will be able to remotely change how the enumerations uh, look. So you will be able to load a complete enumeration, change its option IDs and push the changes back. You will also be able to create new enumerations and so on and so on. For Polarion 2310, we have a pretty busy slide. Uh, in the top part, you can see the big two topics that we plan to, uh, to address. For this release, it's test management and plans. It should be a complete coverage of those topics. You should be able to do things like create new test runs, update their fields, work with the test steps, uh, get and add test records, work with the attachments, and upload test records to test runs. For plans, it's the very same. You will be able to create new plans and plan templates. You should be able to uh, work with their fields, configure them, and also, it should give you the ability to plan already existing work items into plans. Uh, we also want to provide an ability to send you the whole content of a plan, so the report. It should be very similar to how documents will work from the very beginning, but this is uh, to, be, uh, to be detailed later. Uh, the bottom half of the slide contains the gaps that we've identified during our development. Uh, this is mainly focused on work items, and it contains the majority of things that is currently missing uh, in the work items topic. Uh, we dedicated capacity to address the gaps continuously. So uh, starting with this release, uh, we, will be, we will be offering a lot of, uh, lot of ease of use updates and we will cover things that are missing. You can check uh, what we plan to do. Currently, we do not know how much we will manage to do, but uh, if things go well, you will see almost everything. The last thing is another customer feedback. Uh, we've uh, got a lot of requests from our customers and partners to enable project management using the REST API. So what we want to enable is for you to be able to create and configure Polarium projects, including the project templates. We will see if it will get to the release, but it's high on our backlog. After this release, we are not ending with the development of REST API. It will be a continuous effort, and it's very important for you to give us your feedback. So please let us know if you have something missing, or if you would like some things to work differently, we will gather all the feedback, process it, and based on it, we will set our priorities for the next releases. Now for the demo. Martin recorded the demo yesterday, so we do not run into any technical issues. So I will now switch to the video and uh, let you see what he has to say and show us. And I will be happy to respond in the chat.
of other questions. So feel free to ask anything in the chat. Exactly. Thank you, Martina. So I will run the demo now. Hello and welcome everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Depends on wherever in the world you are. My name is Martin Popelak and today I am going to be talking about the REST API. And actually I have prepared for you a little bit more hands-on technical talk about how to use React with uh, the new REST API of Polarion. Actually what I'm showing right now we are going to be building within just 20 minutes of or so. So get ready for it. This is really not a PowerPoint uh, talk. This is really, uh, I will show you the code slide, uh, the code talk. So um, it is my pleasure that you have uh, uh, decided to spend your time with me today and learn something about the Polarian REST API. So what are we going to be building today right you probably have heard about rest api and it's really cool and that you can able to do a lot of things and Peter have talked about it uh right now uh, what you're actually able to do right now and what you're going to be able to do in the future and obviously we are going to be keep building the rest apis uh so this is what we're going to be building today this is a work item table. I have here a couple 17 work items, uh, the, um, 17 requirements that are actually pulled in to Polarian by the REST API. And actually what is even more cooler because this is a React application running inside of the Polarian, uh, I am able to click and you should be loading and it shows me the details like the ID, title, description, severity, uh, uh, all that stuff. And actually, I'm going to be showing to you how to build it within the next 20 minutes or so. I, I think this is actually pretty, pretty cool. Uh, so that being said, let, let's start from the from the basics, right? So if uh, the REST API. So I think the very important link to visit is the, the Swagger UI, where is basically a documentation for the REST API. You can find all the endpoints. You can uh, find all the necessary details about the REST API. Today, we are going to be focusing mainly on the work items, uh, especially the get work items, the list of the work items, get particular work item, and also uh, you can extend it to the patch, but I don't think we'll have time for it today. However, I, I, um, this is this is a good start. As you can see, you can you can uh, use way more. You can get the enumerations, you can get the documents, you can get the HTML parts of the documents, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But hey, let's 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 start <laughs> start easy, right? So we are going to be building uh, this today. Uh, so let's uh, let's let's get to it actually. So we are actually going to start by simply creating the React app uh, that uh, we're going to call recording. Uh, so what it, this will do, this is actually a, a scaffolding for the React application. Uh, as if you are a React developer, you probably know it. If you are not, uh, don't worry. <laughs> it is not that hard. It's not that difficult. What this does, this is basically create some sort of like a default uh, project that uh, that we'll start with, that we will extend uh, furthermore, uh, and add our uh, our uh, things into it. So uh, this will pull and install all the important uh, um, libraries that the React is using. Again, it took uh, twenty eight seconds or so, so very very fast. Um, so that being said, we have the the uh, the application provisioned. We can actually jump it. And, and guys, by the way, uh, this is a disclaimer. This is a live recording, right? So I might be doing some mistakes. I might be doing some uh, some back and forth. Uh, I apologize for that, but this is actually a live recording, right? There is no cuts. There is no nothing. So bear with me. Uh, so I will actually open the uh, the uh, the text editor with the uh, with the React app. And we can actually go ahead and uh, and we can start. We can actually start uh, the React app, uh, which will basically uh, show us uh, this is the uh, basic page. Yeah? So it will take a moment to boot. Uh, so this is what it gives you when you start a new React app. By the way, guys, <laughs> congratulations if you're following along. You have just built your first React app for those that have never done it. 
so you can see, hey, we have the first React app. Uh, so we should start building our uh, our application, right? So uh, actually, one thing that uh, I will install is the Axios library, which we will be using to uh, to uh, pulling the data from the uh, from the Polarian. Before we actually continue to do so, we need to do we need to obtain something that is a personal access token. A personal access token is a form of credentials that will get uh, that will so you don't you have to use your username and password or perhaps in the single sign on, the Polarin is not even aware of your uh, username and password. Therefore, uh, we are going to create a new personal access token. You can see I have access it through the my account personal access token, I will choose the expiration. Uh, so this will give me the one time uh, token. Uh, I will actually save it uh, somewhere here. So I will do const token equals this. Cool. Uh, we have that. So uh, we would like to show a very basic uh, table. Uh, so I will just go ahead and I will not bother you with me writing the uh, the the table. So we'll actually take it here and uh, and copy it down. So what it will basically do, there is a table with the ID my table. It has a hat with the ID and title. And basically it takes a work items uh, constant, which we will define uh, later, because I'm variable, uh, and um, cycle through that uh, and uh, write out the the ID and the title of, of the thing. So that's that sounds a good idea. So uh, if we take a look on the Swagger API, right? So what we need to do is, uh, so we can find the work item, uh, oh, sorry, the projects, work items. Cool, so what all I need to know is the project ID, right? That, that's it, I can actually even go and go ahead and try out it here. Uh, but frankly, I would need to first authorize it. Uh, so let's do it. Uh, so I can actually authorize, so I have what, what I have done now, I have inputted my personal access token into the Swagger, uh, uh, Swagger uh, UI. So my project name is actually REST demo. Uh, and so try out demo. And I don't have to worry about the query. Actually, yeah, let's 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 uh, let's write there uh, let's write there a query. So I would like to get only unresolved requirements, yeah, because I don't want to get old. So what I have done is type requirement and not has value resolution. Basically the query that you know from the Polari. So, and here it is. I get all my work items. That's that's beautiful, right? It was that easy. <laughs> so I just, so what I did, a little recap, I have generated a personal access token. I went to the Swagger UI. I have authenticated with the Swagger UI and I have just uh, uh, tried out the uh, get work items uh, call. What it did in disguise, it actually issued a curl with a get to the machine with my token uh, and with the request uh, that I have. So we need to do something similar in the in the React, right? So as I said, actually we will uh, do const up get ID. Yeah. No, actually this is a query. Well, query. Yeah, the project ID is actually a REST demo. Cool. So we have defined all the all the important stuff. Uh, so we need to do the uh, right now. We need to do the, uh, the the calling itself, right? So I'm actually going to be using the uh, the use effect, uh, which is for those that that know uh, that know uh, React. It's very simple. This is basically something that runs uh, every time the the, uh, the component is uh, is loaded. Uh, so, yep. So I have. Uh, so this will basically tell me don't don't run it unless something changes. Uh, so I have made token, my query, my project ID. So I just need to basically make the header out of it, right? Because like the. Uh, I would need to actually let's let's first start with the Axios uh, Axios call. So uh, it is something in the 
space of const all uh, is axios get. Uh, so how the get looks like, right? So you have the Debian, the, 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 the base URL of your, of your server slash polarian slash rest slash v1. And obviously we have the, the, the call that we had, right? Slash work slash project slash work items. So I just copy that. Uh, because we are in JavaScript, we need to do something like this. So uh, it will automatically fill out, like interpolate our uh, our uh, uh, string from Axios. We need to import the Axios. Axios is a library that is like an HTTP client, basically. Uh, so two things that I need to supply to the uh, to the uh, access call our headers and props right like uh, you see me calling the query etc so uh, so the headers are actually very simple First equals uh, because I need to provide the authorization right authorization uh, and actually uh, okay yeah, so this is the headers because you can actually see it here. Like when we when we tried it, uh, when we tried it here, you can actually see the headers are being set right here. This is the authorization header that is being set for for the call. Yeah, uh, no, I didn't want to turn on my Slack. Uh, so the second thing we need to actually provide is the params, right? So the params actually, and again, we will copy that from the uh, uh, from the uh, REST API call. Like it's very uh, scribblish here, but trust me, it will make sense very very soon. So we will actually provide the query, the query that we defined here, and actually, uh, we because how the the the, the strategy of the Polarian REST API is that we don't want to provide more information that that is not necessarily needed. Right for so by default we provide very little information on this uh, on this call, but because I would like to get the title and uh, and and the things, uh, I I would actually like be able to uh, to work with it. So I need to actually get work items all. I can actually probably more write something like work items title uh, to just get me only the title. But that's 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 good for now. Uh, Cool. So I will actually make it because it's uh, synchronous. So I will actually make it something like this response. Uh, and I will actually console log response data. Right. So hey, let's 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 go. Let's let's actually there is some error. Yeah, sure, because it doesn't know work it ends yet. So let let me just delete it. Uh, let's let's keep it here. So we have the table ready and if you actually go into the console uh, yeah well that request cool so <laughs> so this is the, the part of the live live demo where where uh, where it's uh, really not 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 uh, good but hey let's 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 try one more time actually let me okay the parents Uh, I will copy from my example just to don't waste your time. But as you can see, I have not done, I've probably done some silly spelling, uh, like uh, grammatical error. Anyway, now it's working, right? So I have the project ID REST demo, the headers, so the authorization, the better token, the personal access token. And I have the query as the, the, the params, right? So the, what fields and what query I would like to send to the to the endpoint. So looking at it, if I refresh it one more time, I can see uh, I am getting all the work items uh, in, the, in the console, right? Hey, cool. You just guys made your first REST API call using the uh, REST API inside the React. Cool. Uh, so we need to basically get back the, the, the iterating through the, uh, through the, through the table, right? So that it like makes like, uh, cool. But we need to fill the work items, uh, work items, uh, the work is constants, right? So, or the uh, uh, variable. 
So in order to do that, we actually, the React has something that is called use state. So we will just use it. Uh, so uh, this is how <laughs> React is persisting state. Again, this is not a React course. This is a, a Polar Universe API course and how easy it is uh, to, to, to work with it. So in order to do so, I will actually set work items at the end of the call uh, into the work into the use state parameter and uh, and output it. That being said, voila, it's amazing. That's that's beautiful, right? So it works. So we have made our first uh, API call. Uh, so just to make it a little bit pretty, I have prepared uh, some CSS. Actually, I don't need this. I just need this again. This is just a basic styling, uh, making it a little green, uh, making it. Uh, pretty. So we just made a REST API call using a React uh, to uh, to the Polarian server with the personal access token displaying it in the React. That's amazing. Uh, so what we need to do next, actually, is to create a widget out of this, right? Because, well, this is cool, right? You can do it outside of Polarian. You can make this like a uh, like use it in uh, in uh, in a Mendix or, or something like that. And like that's, that's nice or create a mobile app. But I wanted to show you this, right? Like how easy it is to actually write uh, a rich React application inside of Polarian. Because frankly, before you can use web services and you can all do an all buy this by like like getting the web services or uh, reading the SVN directly. I know I'm not very pretty, but hey, this is this is actually what unlocks you the potential of building a rich React application inside the Polarian. That, that's why you're here, right? Uh, so that being said, I am going to uh, actually cheat a little bit here, and and I'm sorry for that. I am actually going to uh, copy two things, and I will go through them into my projects. And actually, I will make them. Uh, publicly available after this call. So what is R? So this is the widget source. So what a widget source is, is, uh, uh, is uh, um, a stop or like an empty widget that we will use uh, in order to, uh, to, to let, let, so let, let's name it. So uh, recording widget, right? Cool. Uh, so this is this is what it is basically. Uh, you can have the parameters, you can have the detail, you can have the icon. Like, yeah, that's a very pretty icon. Uh, what it actually does, uh, it it declares the 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 root. The, the root is de facto the 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 root of the uh, the uh, React application, uh, so that it knows where to bind. If you can, if you if you see here, it basically find the root and inject the application that's what the react is doing uh, so we we have basically recreated this inside of uh of the widget and here the uh the, the, the little script uh, and again it's not doing anything that any, any magic this is basically what react is using to load uh, their partial javascript and uh the css loading and the js loading i have built a little uh uh, like a build widget uh, that uh, is actually helping me uh, in order to uh, make the, 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 the widget packed. And I will show you live. Don't, don't, don't worry about it yet. Uh, so what I will actually do, and actually I will call it my cool widget 2, because I already are uh, recording that is the output of my, uh, of my build process. I actually need to also go to the package JSON and in the build, actually call the build widget. So what I can do now is uh, an npm run build. So what it, what this will do is it will build the JavaScript. So it takes the fancy ES6 React and translate it into normal HTML JSS, uh, JS and CSS, uh, and actually it will take these built uh, uh, built uh, artifacts and put them inside of the widget 
in order to be loaded. I know this for if you are not using React on daily basis, this might seem uh, as a as a not very uh, not very clear what is it doing. But like if you are, I will I will explain you. Right? We just get here the record link widget uh, that that was that was done by actually this script here. And again, I will publish the script. You don't have to worry about it. What it does, uh, you have seen the render VM, right? Because when the React is building, it will uh, it will make these uh, these static files, these JavaScripts and, and CSS into the uh, into this build directory. So what it does, it actually take them, put them into resources. Uh, that's how the Polar widgets are made, and actually injected these load widget CSS and load widget javascript which is a default sdk method this is nothing new uh into the script uh, all we need to do now is actually uh it's actually committed right so um, so i have actually uh prepared uh svm status uh, uh, uh svm repository of the widgets of my uh, of my remote server. Uh, doing this, you can find it in the project uh, 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 in the SDK. How to do that? So I will actually uh, open it. All I need to do is and open this. Actually, copy. Paste. And actually, I cannot copy and paste like that. To open, reveal it in Finder. Copy. And paste, yeah. So now I need to the uh, SVM status, right? I need to commit it. So SVM add record widget, Oof. and uh, CN commit and send my cool widget. So what I have done right now. Uh, so just to recap it, right? Yeah, let's let's give it a little break. Uh, I know it's twenty one minutes past. Uh, we, uh, so what we have done now is. Uh, we have created a React application. We have out of it created a React widget inside of Polarium and committed it into the Polarium. So right now we can actually go create new live report page uh, recording. Uh, go to the live report and here scroll down. And uh, yeah, we didn't rename it. So cool. Uh, let's see which one is it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one looks this one looks good. So I will delete this region. And hey, voila, we have made ourselves a widget that is in Polarium website uh, that is working. That's 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 beauty. We don't have the fancy clicking yet, but we will we will get there. One more thing that I wanted to actually talk to you about is the uh, personal access token, right? Because what you we have done actually, we have the personal access token in blind side, if you go and look through the code, it will be there. And we don't want to be doing that, right? And it's related to me, and me as a user. So any operation inside of the React widget will be done as me. Well, that's not very good, right? So in order to change that approach, we would like to hide the personal access token and actually using the user's credentials that is actually looking at the report, right? So how I will be doing it. So I will be doing it by uh, by uh, hiding the token and actually reusing something that we call the, the 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 user credentials within the Polarian session. Sounds tricky. I will explain it more uh, in a little bit, right? So I will actually copy the code and and walk you through it, right? Okay, so. I will actually take this. I will create a new file that is called n file, and we will actually create a new property called this. So what this will do is we have a new, now an n file that we don't have to commit into the source code repository at all. It will not get builded because this is only for development. Uh, instead, we actually uh, have. Uh, so we are checking if the code is in development, and if it is. We will use the personal access token from the environment. So we construct the headers by authorization, better uh, React at Polarian token, as we did before. If 
it is not development. So if it's a production, if it's a builded application running inside Polarian, here you can do some pen check if it's, uh, because you might want it to run build somewhere else, but hey, if it's uh, running inside of the, under the website that you want to, please use the headers explore and rest token, which you get by window get rest API token. You need to, uh, 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 yeah, so this is this is how basically the, the Polar and REST is, uh, authentication is working when you're running from within the Polar Yeah, so I will actually do the same uh, same building again. Yeah, so uh, npm run build. Actually, meanwhile, I will, I will, I will try that it's working. So, yeah, it, it is. Uh, actually, I will save it first. Uh, so you can see that it's using the, yeah, yeah and it's, uh, ah, okay, I need to restart the application because it is not aware of the, the new environment variable, but I will be right back. It's loading, taking a while, take a while. Yeah, here it is, right? So it's using path from the env and it actually uh, uh, produced the, uh, the, the, the work item. Cool. So I have built the application, so I will actually copy my that my recording widget into the yeah. I can. I need to. So I will. I I have copied the the widget. So if I can. I can see now that actually change the, the JavaScript, right? The compiled JavaScript. So let me uh, add it. Yeah, this is not re really re recommended, but hey, uh, <laughs> it's fast. Uh, my widget. Cool. So if I now refresh the page, and actually I will run the console as well so it actually tells us right so hey using the rest token from the session so there is no personal access token if i run it as a martin pop lock, it will run under my credentials if you use it it will use your credentials so why it's important because the history will be consistent so if we actually make a little bit even more fancy and we will make some changes uh, using this uh, uh, React app, like because it has the right possibilities, we will change the title. It will be there as the person who did it, which is very important for the traceability business, right? So this is very important. And uh, just to recap, so what we have done, we have a deployed and React application in Polarian using Polarian REST API to get list of work items with a certain query. Okay, sure, we can do some fancy query box here. Uh, that is actually using the session uh, of the user that is currently signed in. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. And we have done it in 27 minutes. We have three minutes left. So we'll try to speed through the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the navigation the, that you've seen before, right? And I will actually uh, be cheating a little bit again and copying some uh, uh, some uh, things from the uh, 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 from the uh, from my second screen and in order to preserve time. Again, we, we are running a little bit short. So we will actually need to make components in order to do this, right? So we will make a table JS and we will actually make uh, detail uh, JS, right? Because that's that's what it is. So in order to make the table JS, well, we actually know it very, very, very dearly, right? So this is actually majority of our app JS. We will just take, yeah, and copy into into here, right? We have not changed much. Uh, so we have we kept our authentication. Uh, we kept our project ID, our params. Uh, the only thing that we have changed here is that we have added the link to uh, work items. Uh, so it actually makes a link. So, but we have actually make it in a table widget. Uh, the detail uh, is, is very similar, right? So uh, again, if I, I will just use a little, little magic here and just walk you through the code. 
so what we have done here is we have the same use effect. Uh, we don't have the work items here, we have just the work item. Uh, and we are actually using the use param from the React router DOM, which is passing the, uh, the ID that you want to get. The only difference that we have here is actually we are from the Axios, we are not getting the list of the work items, even though we would be able to pass the, the data within the link, but just to make it fancy, we are repeating the, uh, the, the call here. So we get the HTTP call of the particular work items. Again, we would like to get all the work items fields uh, and just display it. Yeah? If it actually, if you don't have a work item because it's loading, because you didn't get it, you will be able to do some uh, exception mechanism here. Uh, maybe it's not found. Uh, we, and we just display the, the key value here, right? So, uh, in order to make it all working, we actually also need to change the app.js. Uh, and that would be actually a simplification because we will just create in-memory router. Uh, for those that are React enthusiasts, uh, we cannot use the website router because we, Polarin is already using it, right? Uh, so we need to create in-memory router and actually provide two paths, right? One to table and one to detail. And actually, if I save it here, actually, I need to save the detail here as well. Uh, and yeah, I, I, again, not the Slack, wrong window. Uh, if I, actually, yeah, I need to run it. Uh, I will just try to debug it if it works. So, let's hope it works. Yeah, so we, we actually get the link. And if you click on, the item itself, we get the call. And you can see that it's still using the, the, the uh, path from the env and getting the two different calls. So I can actually show it to you in the network, right? So if I actually call this, it will give me the particular work item. If I go back, it will actually call me the, the work items like uh, one more time. Obviously, we can apply some caching strategies and, and whatnot, uh, be more effective, but not for the course. Uh, here, I will do the last build, npm build, uh, npm run build, actually, yeah, live demo, sorry. So it will take a second to compress the JavaScript uh, into the, uh, uh, the compressible format and actually build the widget, uh, copy the widget into the, my, my pulled repository of widgets. Uh, and here, all I need to do is, is commit it and refresh. And here it is. We have the widget that has actually its own navigation that, okay, I can render it as HTML. I didn't, uh, but I certainly can. Uh, I can go back and forth. I can look at new work items. I, it, like you can see, it would be very easy to add a little query bar or maybe a little like uh, uh, like this can be like on the double click, I can start typing the title and, and send it as a put. Very easy, right? So uh, we made it all within the 30 minutes. And I believe you didn't even have to know much of React to understand what we have done. So let me re refresh again what we have done. We have actually used the Polarian REST API. The, here is the Swagger UI. Uh, you can try it. We have generated a personal access token that we used uh, for a small React application, uh, actually that's very pretty and useful in my humble opinion, uh, that all it does, it, uh, it calls the, 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 the get work items with a particular query and displays it in the table. And we have added a little bit of React uh, uh, voodoo magic with the, with the in-memory router uh, that we are able to, to basically create a new uh, like sub page uh, that will display the the, uh, the the information about the about the work item, and this is just a surface. As you can see, you can do way much more with the REST API, and you can do way much more with the React. Uh, so you can actually build very very rich digits that displays a uh, Gantt charts or timetables or traceability metrics or by by planning boards. It's up to your imagination, right? Uh, I will be here for some questions. We just take a little bit of 34 minutes. I hope you liked it. Uh, again, I will be publishing the build scripts. Uh, that might be the most trickiest part 
uh, of this demo. But I hope you really guys enjoy my presentation and I would be looking forward to uh, that you guys are hacking away uh, with our Polar Universe API. Thanks and have a great rest of the day. Okay, and that was Martin's demo. Martina, thank you for preparing this for all of us. Hello. Now let's get to the questions if we have any that we haven't responded to yet. Uh, we had the questions if the recording will be available. Yes, it will be available later. You will get an email. Uh, we have a question if similar could be achieved by JavaScript and Martin already responded that yes, it should. Yeah, and by the way, if you guys, I, I think there can be, I cannot publish any files within the recording, so I'll just write my email into the chat now. And if you would like to have, get the repository of the, the project that we just shown, just shoot me an email and I will send it back to you. Like that would be the easiest way. All right, let's wait another minute. And if you have another question, please enter it in the chat. Uh, if work item or document is locked via GUI, can it be updated by REST? Yes, it can. Uh, the REST is using our, uh, our internal and public Java APIs in the background. And those APIs aren't influenced by uh, GUI lock, as you, as you call it. Uh, for the ones who do not understand what this should be, uh, there is a possibility to set fields as read only. And when a user is using Polarian UI, uh, he's not able to change that values, but that is only on the UI level. Uh, is there any REST based integration built with Team Center? Uh, I think that uh, I think that the direct integration uh, with Team Center is using REST API, but it's using REST API of Team Center, not of Polarian. On Polarian side, it is a Java plugin. Is there a .NET API available? I think that for that you would need to generate uh, generate a connector. And uh, yeah, so, so the, the, the plan is not to provide any specific language library, but because you're using the open API, you can generate whatever library you want using the code gen yourself. Exactly. Is there a Polar API method to directly generate the REST API token instead of manually using it? No, that for the security reasons, you cannot generate the personal access token via any uh, API. So you have to do it manually. Uh, would you, wouldn't it be possible to add the demo files to a Polarian community post? Uh, I will consult this with uh, our guys and let you know uh, because of the IP rights and everything. So if I can post it, if yes, I will I will post it. Can we view the attachment PDF from work and via REST API into Polarian Rich page? I don't know if I understand the question, but I can answer the way I understand it. So you can obtain the content of the PDF that is attached to a, a document, to a work item. So you can do that. Uh, so yes, I think, I hope I am answered. Yeah. It means you can bypass security by altering protected fields via REST. Um, sure, yeah, that is, that is correct. Uh, the the uh, Depends what you mean protected fields, right? So some protected fields are UI based only, the same as applies to uh, web services, right? Uh, if they are protected uh, uh, in like in some way, let's say a workflow condition requires it or something, uh, you might not, you cannot obviously write into them. Or if you have like a per field permissions. Uh, querying for work items more than one project is available. Uh, this is something that will come either in 2304 or 2310. It's high on our Backlog, and uh, we will get to it soon. Yep. <laughs> can we call REST APIs in scripts? Yes, you can. Uh, 
All right, any more questions? I'm gonna give Law 30 seconds. All right, guys, so, so let, me think, let me say a couple words. I know it was pretty fast. And for those that have no experience with React, it must be uh, a bit too fast maybe. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to demonstrate how easy it is to use the REST API from within modern JavaScript and then you can actually build very rich applications within the Polarian using the Polarian widget system uh, to build really a rich experience for the users. Document access present. I don't understand the question, but you can get the content of a document from the REST API. If that's Not yet. You okay. will able to do Sorry. that in the next release. Right. That's correct. I'm sorry. I'm already living on the <laughs> edge branch. I'm sorry. Yes. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So thanks everyone for attending attending this presentation. Please visit our community site. Uh, there will be updates posted there, and enjoy next presentations. And thanks, Lutz, for the. <laughs> for the uh, clarification. Yeah, I, I think it's actually pretty cool. I, I'm, I'm not touching Velocity anymore, <laughs> luckily. <laughs> uh, now, with all seriousness, it's very, very, very cool. And uh, all, like we still have a lot long way to go with the availability of everything that is currently available in the Velocity uh, through REST API. So I, I would say I, I made a step forward, not revolutionized. You did a great job, Martine. Thank you very much. Thank and thanks you. for yeah. everyone good, for attending. Good to, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> same as Martina. Good to, good, to, good to talk to you virtually. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye.